Perhaps unsurprisingly, contextlib is a library dedicated to context manager utilities in Python. If you don't know what context managers are, I did a video a little while ago explaining them in their raw form. In this video, I'm gonna be using just simply the contextlib to create context managers, as well as show you a number of other really useful utilities. I'm gonna be showing you five today, and hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to use at least one of them in a program of your own. Of course, if you find this video helpful at any point, then consider leaving a like to let me know, and maybe subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. So the first thing that I wanna show is from contextlib import context manager. And you could argue that this is sort of like the flagship feature of contextlib. It allows you to create a context manager using just a function. So it is a decorator, so we can decorate it like that. And if we were to create, say, a function or a context manager that set the random seed within a, a context, we would first need to import random, that would help. And then if we were going to type it, we would need to, from typing, import iterator like that. And then we do def seed. And then I'm going to mirror uh, the exact function signature of random.seed. So it'd be a, that's an int. Uh, float, uh, string, bytes, uh, byte array, or none, equals none, which is quite the series of options to have. That's genuinely the signature. And then we return an iterator, in this case of none, and then we're going to pass. And then within this, we can do random.seed a, so we're actually setting the seed. And then I'm going to print uh, that we are yielding. Uh, and then we just yield like that. And then we print uh, resetting seed. And then we set the random dot seed um, without any arguments at all, which sets it back to the default behavior. So what's happening here is, well, actually, you know what? I will do a practical example and then I'll explain it because that will probably be a bit easy to work out. So if we did something like this, and then if we did maybe uh, two of them, uh, when we enter the with seed context, we come up here and then we set seed and then 42 will be set to A. And then we set the seed to A. We then print our debug message and then we yield control of the program back into the context block. So we then enter the context block here. We then do everything in here. We then exit the context block. We come back into this and then we continue from the yield statement. So we then print resetting seed and then we'd reset the seed. If we go ahead and do that, we can see that we have yielding. So that's here. We then yield back. So we then print our random values and then we reset the seed afterwards. If I were to do that a few times, we can see that the random values are the same every time. If I were to print one of these, actually, if I were to just move this one out, we can see that the first one is always the same but the second one is always different because we've now reset the seed because we've exited the context manager. And that is, well, anyone that's familiar with context managers will know that this is what they do. But you may not have known that you can create it using a decorator and a function. However, our context manager is not perfect as is. If we were to introduce an error inside the context block and we print it again, we run it again, sorry, we get the yielding, fine. We then get the value, okay. And then we get the trace back. But you'll notice that it never prints resetting seed. And that's because we don't have any handling in place to deal with that. So the general convention, and pretty much I imagine what you'll see everywhere, at least this is how they do it in the Python docs, is you'll have a try with the actual logic. And this is where you put your yield. And then you have a finally, and then you'd have your kind of cleanup operations, whatever you wanted to call it. And now if we do that, we can see that we reset the seed and then we raise the error. So context managers have their own way of handling errors. Um, I should say that I have done a video on context managers before in their more raw form. So if you're confused about what I'm talking about, that I recommend going and watching that, then coming back. Um, but this uh, context manager decorator handles all that for you. And the finally block here just means that even if there is an exception within the context, it will then come back in here. It will then see, oh, we need to run this code. It will run it, reset everything, and then it will go and you know, raise the error or whatever it wants to do. If you handle the error down here, so if you were to do like a try accept down here, we wouldn't have that problem, even if you didn't uh, provide the finally block. 
it's just more, you know, especially if you're doing a context manager with files or databases or something, and you want to make sure that something is closed, then you can do that using the try finally here. The other really neat feature about this context manager decorator is that you can actually use it as a decorator itself. So you can use this seed as a decorator. So as an example, if we were to have a def random numbers uh, here, and then we provided, I don't know, n equals three, uh, or n, n, which is an int, equals three by default, and then list int, and then we do return random uh, dot rand int one to 10, and then, you know, n numbers of those. If we were to set seed as a decorator here, and we can use the same seed as before, comment that out and comment that out. Actually, if I just comment all that out, that maybe won't get in the way. And then we can print random numbers like that. What we get back is um, two, one, five, if we do it again, we will see that the random numbers are the same. And that's because we've now decorated this function with a context manager. So this function is sort of within the context of the context manager. So for the entire duration of the execution of this function, the random seed is 42. And then you can see we're resetting the seed. So if we were to, print, I was gonna say, if we were to print it out, um, well, actually, if we, we can print random dot random, we can see that the, the seed has indeed been reset. Uh, rand int 110. We can see that that second value will be different every time. And that's because the seed has been reset. Going back to the idea of making sure that everything is closed, contextlib does actually provide a decorator or context manager, sorry, that allows you to do that. I'm going to get confused with the two now that I've talked about decorators. Uh, so we can do contextlib import closing. And this closing essentially uh, allows you, or it's it's a context manager that makes sure to close whatever has been opened in the context manager. And this is largely for third party packages that don't have context managers of their own. Most Python interfaces do have context managers built in. So the open method, for example, will do, the URL open will do, uh, but you can do this on things that don't have it. Uh, although we are going to, and I will actually take that, uh, I won't. I'll print f.read. We are going to use the open uh, just for demonstration purposes to show that it works, uh, but you wouldn't need to do it for this. You just need to be aware of it for any third party packages that you might want to do it for. So if we do pi uh, closing like that, we can see that we've printed out uh, the context of the file we just wrote and we have closed the context manager. Now it's very difficult to prove that, but I can show you what it's actually doing. So when it enters, it just takes the thing. And then when it exits, it just calls self.thing.close. So anything that has a dot close method will have it called when the context manager exits. Um, and this just means that if something doesn't have a close, you don't have to rely on explicitly closing it. You can just use closing and it will handle it for you. The third thing I want to show you is from context lib import suppress. And this as the AI, <laughs> AI preview is showing will allow you to suppress errors uh, in a way that isn't um, a try except block. So typically I'll show you what you would kind of do otherwise. You do try that and then that and then that. And if I get rid of this, so we can try one divided by zero in the case of a zero division error, we can then pass it and this will ignore or suppress the error from being raised. However, we can also do that using with suppress. And this will suppress uh, within this block if this error or any other errors, I think you can pass in as many as you want. Yeah, you can pass in as many as you want there. If any of those errors show up in this block, the error will be suppressed and the context block will exit. So if you run this, pi suppress dot pi we'll see that we get no output we get no tracebacks because the errors have been suppressed now you can see that it takes up a lot less lines of code in my opinion it's also much more readable it's much clearer what's going on we are explicitly suppressing these errors um, and sorcery the AR refactoring tool will actually recommend using suppress instead of try accept pass that's how I learned about it but it does come with a bit of a caveat. And to show that off, I have this suppress benchmark. 
So we have our try accept code and we have our suppress code. We then also have some timings that are running these functions a million times each. So do keep that in mind when you see the results. If we then run this, we can see that the try accept ran in about 0.15 seconds and the suppress was three times slower. So suppress is three times slower than try accept because it's just doing more work. It, I think it actually compares instances and stuff, which is why it's doing it. If it's only ever going to be called once or twice, it's probably not going to matter. But if this isn't a function that's being called millions upon millions upon millions of times, then this three times slowdown is going to start adding up. So whether or not you want to use suppress will really depend on your priorities. The final two things I want to show you are both very similar. So we're going to talk about them at the same time. And they are from context lib import suppress. Nope, that was last time. Redirect standard out and redirect standard error, which do very much what they say on the tin. And we're going to import sys for something we're going to do a bit later. So if we do if name equals main one final time, like that, uh, we can with open help.txt. I wish this AI would shut up. <laughs> it's getting really annoying right now. As F, we can then uh, with uh, redirect standard out F like that, and then help pal. So this example is taken straight out of the Python documentation. What we are doing here is we are opening a file using a context manager, ironically enough. As F, we are then redirecting the standard out to this file uh, for the duration of this block. So if I were to go and say like print hello world, even when the file is still open, we'll see that this gets printed to the terminal. But if I run this, we can see that hello world gets printed because it's outside of this redirection block, but the help pal ends up in this file because we've redirected it. And it doesn't have to be a file either. It can be an IO string object or any sort of IO object, I think. It can also be, if you wanted to send it to sys.standardError, sys.standardError, if you really wanted to. Um, so basically any sort of IO based file stream, you can redirect the standard out into it. You can also do the same with redirect standard error. Now I will say that redirect standard error does not send tracebacks to a different place. Tracebacks are not written to standard error in Python. I don't know if there's a way, or maybe they are, and there's some hook that just overrides it. I'm not sure. But if you had a program or a script or something like that, that wrote anything to standard error, then you could redirect that as well. So we could redirect, or we can open error.txt as f, and then with redirect standard error, say just print hello world, and then we'd need to send that to standard error. Uh, and this is important actually with the, the standard out that I forgot to mention. If you are doing a print, you can redirect it using this file. So this file lives by the same rules. It needs to either be an open file or sys.standardError or some sort of IO based text stream. In fact, actually standard error is a text IO you can see there. But if we were to do that, we can see that we have this error.txt and then this hello world is printed here. Uh, this second hello world on the terminal is the one from earlier. You can also redirect using both. So I could redirect stand out as well. Uh, and then I could print, so actually if I print uh, hello standard out like that, we can see that because we've redirected the standard out and the standard error to the same place, our error.txt has both in it. And you could use this to uh, redirect the standard out to one place and the standard error to another. I forget what Python version, I think it was 3.11 that allowed um, opening multiple context managers at once. If you're on earlier versions of Python, you can do this just by doing that. Whoopsie daisies. Uh, and that will do the same thing. Let me know in the comments which feature of context lib is your favorite. I think it's a really, really cool tool. I don't use it that much and I probably should use it a lot more because there are some really, really cool functions in here, especially uh, the trick about creating a parameterized decorator using the context manager decorator. For more tips and tricks regarding all things Python, then check out the Python is Awesome series in full and I'll see you in the next video for whatever we do next.